Greetings, I'm Barrent, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to be playing Kingdom Death Monster. We just got done with the hand. We were able to take him out. We won. He applauded to us. That was fantastic. We came back here and now we do have some things that we gained from our encounter. And other than that, not much really changed. Alana has died sadly, but that's okay. We're going to continue on. We'll be victorious. Are you excited to see how our survivors go through the settlement phase and our next hunt? If so, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. So this settlement phase is going to be a little bit different from all the other settlement phase I've done, mainly because that was a special showdown. So it says here, after the showdown, heal the survivors, remove their tokens, and return the, to the update death count step. So we don't get to gain endeavors or draw settlement event cards or anything like this. We just go straight to the update death count. So that is really the only thing that's going to be different. We do have to check our milestones from this step on, trigger any milestones or story events that conditions are satisfied. There actually are not going to be any. So we're going to be not going through that. There's nothing really to develop. We have a lot of broken lanterns. Uh, we have an eye of cat and a great cat bone, but I don't think there's anything I want to make. So that's going to be done. We're going to prepare our departing survivors. We're going to archive our resources, and then we're just going to end the settlement phase. Now, of course, we can turn some of this fresh acanthus into, what is it, the dried acanthus, according to our organ grinder, I believe is what he has. He's able to turn it, no, I don't think it's him, it's somebody else. It's, uh, you it's right here, dried acanthus. So I can go ahead and turn fresh acanthus into dried acanthus if I have enough of the cards left. I'm not sure how many of those we still have. So let's go ahead and do that. So to make our dried acanthus, we need a fresh acanthus. Well, we have two fresh acanthus cards, but sadly, we've already made three dried acanthus cards, so we can't make any more. There's no more in the box. So we're, I believe we're limited to what is in the box and what we can make. So we have three dried acanthus, which is good. We can use these when we go out hunting, but sadly, we can't actually make the fresh acanthus into dried acanthus. So we're going to be archiving that and our broken lantern when it comes to the archive step, and that's pretty much actually where we're going to go next. I'm going to prepare our departing survivors, and then we're going to go ahead and see what we're hunting. But before we do that, of course, we do have to recognize that Alana has died. That's too bad. And we would normally gain two endeavors for her death, but we skipped that whole part of the settlement. If we would have lost her during the settlement phase, we would have gained at least one endeavor. So our first survivor is going to be Riverwind. He's going to come on this hunt. He hasn't been on a hunt in a while. He's going to go ahead and take this one on. Now, he's got a lot of insanity. He's at 14. I don't know what to expect from the thing we're hunting, so I think it's best to just kind of go with at least one person that has some experience and knows what he's doing. And the rest of the group is probably all going to be kind of newbies, but we'll see how it goes. She, he's got a lot of other things going. Now, he's got this monster claw, tooth fist. He's got the fist and tooth fighting. Art. This has really been a big bummer. It hasn't really worked for me at all, so I'm actually taking the bow with me this time and I'm actually going to change his weapon proficiency to I'm going to leave it at fist and tooth maybe he can at least get one hit in who knows he also is always a threat unless he's knocked down and he can't even con encourage or eat anything this is amazing so that's going to be Riverwind he's all going to be on our hunt so our next survivor we're going to bring with us is Mina. She was the star of the show in the last time. She did such a great job standing there and doing her best. Now, I'm actually giving her an even more of an upgrade. I gave her the bone pick. I know it doesn't sound like an upgrade, but she has linked three greens together, which is going to activate her monster grease, giving her even an extra invasion. She has two evasion right now, which is really good. Now, I also have gone ahead and given her six survival. We get four from our innovations when we leave. So she already had two from the last fight. So she has six. Now, sadly, she only has four moving, so hopefully we're not running after this thing, but we'll see how it goes. That's going to be her. She only has two insanity, but here it says when you depart, you gain two insanity. So I'm going to go ahead and give her four insanity here. So we're going to erase the two and put a four. So hopefully that'll help her survive through this mess. And then because of our leather boots, I'm going to be able to gain seven survival. So we're at our max. I should be at eight, but I can't have eight. I can only have seven. So we're at seven. She's going to go with max survival, which is going to be awesome. That's her. She's done and ready to go. 
So our next survivor is going to be Palin. He's going to go ahead and come with us. He has the same stuff he had last time. He's got that luck charm, which gives him plus one luck, which is really good. And I actually, I did do the luck wrong in the last video. When you do roll and you actually do get enough to be able to wound, the, get your critical wound with the luck, that is enough to actually wound it. You, I know I needed a 10 to actually wound that last monster we fought, but I was should have been actually getting a critical hit on the nines. That was my fault. And I believe that's how it works. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But that's as far as I understand how luck works in the game. So I did do it wrong when I was fighting the hand, just to let you know. So he's all set to go. He's got his seven survival. He also is moving at four, so we're really slow, most of us, but that's okay. I think things are going to be good. And our last survivor is going to be a new survivor. We're going to bring a new fresh lamb to, I guess you could say, the slaughter that always seems to happen to the poor person in this armor set. All right, this is Sylviara. She's going to join us. She doesn't have anything going for her, but she was a newer survivor. So she's got some awesome starting stats. She gets plus one accuracy, strength, and evasion, and she also starts with an understanding. So we've gone ahead and put down all her armor. Now, sadly, she doesn't start with any insanity, and I don't have anywhere to put those noses. So she's kind of going to go with what she has here. But she does get some of that extra strength and some extra movement. So hopefully that'll counterbalance the fact that she doesn't have any insanity. We'll see how it all goes. So our characters are all set up and ready to go. But what are we going to hunt for? We can either hunt for a level 2 white lion. Maybe we can get some more good resources. Or we could go for a screaming antelope. We could either do one or a level 2. Maybe we could probably take down a level 2. And we could maybe get enough to be able to finish off our screaming antelope gear. But I don't think we're going to do that because I've had way too many requests for our phoenix. Here he is. He's going to come in in all his glory. He is all set up and painted and ready to be played. With this phoenix, I've had a lot of fun painting the phoenix. It was so much fun to do this. I painted him kind of in a little rainbow, as you can tell, because, I, because the story was called Rainbow Feather, so why not? So we're going to go ahead and put him down on the board right there, and we're going to set the rest of our hunt board up. So here's our hunt board showing what we're going to be setting everything up as. We're fighting a level one, so he's going to go right there, and these two squares are going to be his own personal events, and we're going to be starting, of course, right back here. So we're going to go ahead and put our hunt events down. We're going to put one there, and we're going to put one here. And then, of course, we've got our special hunt events for our phoenix. We get this many. we got all of them right here. We're going to go ahead and put them down. We're going to put one here, and we're going to put one right here. Now, if we ever have to actually move the phoenix backwards, we're going to be putting out just another random hunt event. Now, of course, we do have our special hunt events. We have both our herb gathering and our mineral gathering we can put out. I'm going to put the mineral gathering first, and then we put the hunt, this one second. And then now, if, if I did this wrong last time, you'd go ahead, draw this hunt, you do it. Then you have to draw this. So you do have to do both. If I did, I think I did it wrong the last time we did this. So we're all set to go. We're going to go ahead and start our hunt for our phoenix. So the first person that's going to move up, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have her move up. We're going to have, what's her name? Mina. Mina is going to go ahead and move up. She's going to grab the special hunt event. And we're going to do that first. Now it's mineral gathering. It's a special hunt event. We're going to go to the story event, Mineral Gathering. All right, let's see what happens. So here we have our picture of Mineral Gathering. And it says, every survivor with a pickaxe rolls on the Mineral Gathering table. So unlike the Herb Gathering, I'm only able to roll one time because I only brought one pickaxe. So we're going to go ahead, take our die, and roll it on the Mineral Gathering table. We got a nine. Let's go ahead and see what that says. So 8 plus here says gain one scrap basic resource. If the event occurs after overwhelming darkness, you find a cave. Resolve all rolls on mineral gathering. Then any survivor may descend to the worm tunnels. Well, we're not overwhelming darkness, and we're not hopefully going to see it. But we do get to gain one scrap. So we have resolved our mineral gathering. So we're going to go ahead and discard it. Sadly, we didn't get much. We got a scrap. So we're going to go ahead and keep that. And she's going to go ahead and take that. Mina is. Now we're going to go ahead and do our basic hunt event, which is going to be roll a 2d10 and see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and roll 2d10. This will be our 10s die. That'll be our 1s die. Let's see what we got. We got a 0, 2. So we got a 2. Wow. Let's see what that turns into. So we've managed to find a corpse. It says the survivors are overcome by a sudden chill, their breath seizing in their lungs. The survivors' teeth chatter mercilessly. All survivors lose monster-level survival. So we're all going to lose one survival. At the center of the sudden frost is a perfectly preserved corpse. Now, if the settlement has cannibalized, the event revealer gains one random basic resource. We don't have that. If the settlement has graves, the event revealer examines the corpse and gains plus one courage and plus one understanding. We do have that. If the settlement has memento more, the event revealer understands a little about what happened to the corpse. 
and gain one random fighting art. We don't have that, but we do have graves. So we're going to gain a courage and an understanding for Mina. So Mina has gained a courage and an understanding. Now, she does have indecision, but I'm going to have to roll twice on hunt decisions, not the hunt actual table. There weren't any decisions to make here. She just actually got the courage and understanding from having graves. So with that event complete, we're going to go on to our next hunt event. We're going to move everybody up, and we're going to have Palin go next. Palin is going to go ahead, and he's got the bone sickle, so why not grab the special herb gathering card? So the survivor consumes herbs and berries. All survivors gain plus one survival. That's the reason I didn't actually remove it from there from our last hunt event. We were supposed to all lose one survival, but I knew this was coming next. So instead of taking it off and putting it back on, we just not, I'm not going to gain the survival because we all lost one in the last thing. But we are going to go ahead and take care of herb gathering as our special hunt event. So this is the event where I get to choose as many dice to roll per survivor as I want to. And then if any of these are the same number, I get zero for the roll. Otherwise, I actually will be able to add them all up. And if we can get to anywhere above 75, something cool might happen down here. Otherwise, if I can get 45 or 75, I'm going to get two fresh acanthus. Then, of course, one fresh acanthus and a survival or else nothing. So we're going to go ahead and start. We're going to start with Palin because he's, it's his event. We're going to roll three dice. Let's see how this goes. That's going to be our best plan here. We're going to roll. We got a 10, an 8, and a 7. So that is 10, 25. Our next survivor is also going to roll three dice. Let's see how that goes. We're going to roll them all up. We got another 10. Oh, we got two sixes. So we got nothing for that roll. All right. We're going to go for broke here. Our next survivor is going to roll four dice. Let's see how this goes. We got a one. Oh, we got lots of ones. Okay, this is terrible. It's the worst idea ever. Okay, why not? Let's just roll five dice. Let's see how this goes. Okay, we're going to see what we get here. I'm sure it's going to be a double of something. Oh, we got two tens. That's too bad. All right, well, we got pretty much nothing for this. I got, what, 25, which means we get to gain a fresh acanthus, and everybody gets plus one survival. So everybody was already at max survival except for Silvara. So I went ahead and gave her another survival. She's up to six. So with herb gathering completed, we're going to go ahead and discard that, and we're going to see what our first event for our phoenix is. It says... Bird-brained. The phoenix fuzzily gathers materials for its temporary nest. Roll a d10. Okay, we're going to roll a d10 and see what happens. I've got it right here, d10. Let's go. I've got a 1. Well, that's usually never good. Let's see what it says here. If the result is even, move the phoenix two spaces forward on the hunt board. Oh, no. If the result is odd, move the phoenix backwards. Oh, that means it's going to go past overwhelming darkness. If the phoenix lands on or passes over survivor's current hunt space start the showdown immediately and the phoenix ambushes survivors well that didn't happen but i do have to discard this and i have to move the phoenix back two spaces so i've gone ahead and moved our phoenix back two spaces and i have to put another basic hunt event out all of our people move up and so far we've had these two go i think it's time for our veteran riverwind riverwind is going to go next he's going to move up and reveal the basic hunt event which means we're going to roll 2d10 and we're going to see what happens here's my tens die let's see what happens we got a 58 let's go consult our book we have found scent on the wind a strong wind blows bringing with it scent of distant places and things the event revealer rolls a d10 if the monster one through five the monster catches your scent it moves one space closer if its movement starts the showdown the monster ambushes the survivor if it's six plus the survivors smell their quarry's foul odor and surge forward. The survivors may skip the next hunt space. If this movement starts the showdown, the survivors ambush the monster. All right, let's see what happens. We're going to roll it right here. We got a four. So instead, the monster catches your scent and moves one space closer. So that's actually going to be pretty good. So we're going to be moving the monster one step closer, which is actually going to benefit us. Because if we land on him while he's on the overwhelming darkness, we don't have to resolve it. I don't even know what it is. It could be good for all I know. I'm guessing it's not. Most things in this game are not good. We're going to go ahead and discard this. We're going to move our entire group up. And there's only one person that hasn't gone, and that's our newest member. She's going to go ahead and reveal this one. And it says, Fetal Field. The survivors approach a withering field littered with phoenix droppings twisting up through the rocks. Some acanthus plants have grow vigorously while others wither and disintegrate before your eyes. All survivors suffer three brain event damage and gain plus one understanding. If any survivor has a bone sickle, they gain one fresh acanthus strange resource. If any survivor has a scavenge kit, they gain one mulligan droppings from the phoenix resource. Well, I don't, ha I get the 
I can probably get the fresh acanthus because I have the bone sickle, but I don't get this one. That's too bad. And I still have to roll an abandoned hunt event. All right, never going to take three brain damage and gain understanding. Oh, wow, we got a lot to do. So we're going to go ahead and start with her. This is brain event damage. It's not brain damage. So the event damage, the most it can ever do is just fill in your box. She doesn't have to roll on the evil death table of doom because it's event damage. She's also going to gain one understanding. All right, next, he's going to suffer three. So he's going to go from six down to three, but he is going to gain one understanding, which isn't too bad. Next, we've got our veteran, Riverwind, who's got 14, so losing three isn't going to be the end of the world. He's at 11, but he does get an understanding, and sadly, that doesn't move him up a rank. That's too bad. Let's see here. What is he? Tinkerer. Oh, okay. That's good. Now, this one, on the other hand, she's going to lose three, which means she's going to go down to only one insanity, which is kind of sad, but she does have insight, the first insight, so we're going to take care of that right now as well. So this is our insight tables. We haven't seen these in a while, but there's one for the showdown, there's one for the hunt phase, and there's one for the settlement. And she has gained epiphany. She is dreaming. It says, you dream before you, toiling silently, a strange creature with the imprint of a human face sculpts stone faces into the ground. You meet its concave gaze and wake. Gain the following ability and roll on the table below. So we're going to gain explore. When you roll on an investigate table, add plus two to your result. And now I get to roll a d10. Let's see what I'm able to get. We got a four. So she is going to gain plus three survival and plus three insanity. That's actually really helpful to her because I don't think she had much insanity. I can't remember right. Okay, this actually doesn't help very much. I was thinking of Silvara, but that's okay. She's going to go back to four insanity, but she already has max survival. But she does gain explore. I'm going to go ahead and put that here. Add plus two to your investigate roll results. That's actually going to be really good, I think, for her because she already has an indecision that says roll twice on the hunt decision. So I think these will pair off pretty well, hopefully counterbalancing each other. And she is also going to go ahead and gain the fresh acanthus. So she has that. We're then going to go ahead and discard this. Oh, no, we don't. Now we have to roll a random hunt event. I almost forgot about that. All right, so we got all that awesome stuff, but then we do have to roll a random hunt event. So let's see what we get. We got an 80. So let's see what happens to her. And we have managed to find the scribe's book. It says a huge, ornately bound book lies open before the survivors. If the settlement has pictographs, any survivor with three plus courage may write their name in the book. Insane survivors with plus three courage must write. Each survivor who writes their name in the book rolls a d10 and adds their understanding. If no one writes, roll again on the hunt event table before moving on the hunt board. Well, I don't have pictographs, so I believe, uh, let's see here, if someone has pictographs, any survivor with three plus cards must write their name. I don't have pictographs, so I don't believe I can write in this. Or is it if I'm insane and I have three courage, I must write even if I don't have pictographs? I think that might be the deal. Now, if I'm wrong about this, please let me know. So I believe Riverwind has to write in the book because he's got four courage and he is totally insane. So I'm going to have to roll on the table below. So I'm going to go ahead and, like everybody tells me not to do, roll on the book. Let's see how we do. We got a four. All right, we're going to go ahead and add that. So a four plus his understanding, which is five, brings him to a nine. As you write your name, you feel restored. Heal all injury levels and lost armor points. Gain plus two survival. Well, none of that's going to matter to me because I've got absolutely none of that. Now, oh my gosh, look at all this other stuff that could have happened. That would have been awesome. Look, plus two courage, understanding, and survival. Look at this. Survival, understanding, courage, permanent speed. Oh, wow, this guy could have been a massive improvement to him. But thank goodness we didn't get this one. Look at this. You finished writing your name and you vanished from history. Ah, you'd be dead in your archive all your gear. Absolutely amazing. Wow. The scribe's book is something else. So we've gone ahead and completed this one. That's done. Now, if I did that wrong, please let me know. But he was insane, and he had three plus courage, so I believe he still does that. All right, we're going to move these guys up. And we have one more hunt event to reveal, so we have to figure out who's going to do it. I think we're going to go ahead and have our veteran. Riverwind is going to go ahead and reveal the, the basic hunt event, and we're going to go ahead and roll a 2d10 and see what we get. We got an 82, so we'll go see what that says in the magic book. And we've gone ahead and found consuming grass. It says vibrant green grass grows in patches ahead of the survivors. Closer inspection on the delicate leaves reveals they are sharp as any blade. Each survivor rolls a D10. The lowest scoring survivor, or survivors in case of a tie, become a straggler as the survivors carefully pick their way past the verdant hazard. A straggler stumbles into the brush. Roll a D10. 
if the survivor has a whip, which we do not, <laughs> of course, a hasty tether is made. Roll, add plus four to your roll. So let's go ahead and see who our straggler is. So we're going to go ahead and start. We're going to roll for Riverwind first. Riverwind got a three. Our next person is going to be Mina. Mina got a nine. All right. Our next person is Palin. Palin got a two. All right. That's awesome. And Sylviara got a six. So it is going to be Palin. So Palin's our straggler. We don't have a whip. We're going to roll and see what happens to him. We got a seven. So we're going to go ahead and check our book. So two to nine says that you fall but managed to interpose something between the grass and your bare skin. Either archive one gear of your choice from your gear grid to protect yourself or treat this as a result of one. And here's our result of one in case we wanted to use this. You land in the grass patch. As you climb to your feet, you realize it's too late. The parts of your body that touch the ground have sprouted with sharp blades of grass. Any attempt to remove them only spreads them further over your body. During the showdown, you are never a threat. Ignore any effect that would make you a threat, even the white lion sniff. At the end of the showdown, your body blossoms into a whorl of immaculate green grass, and you're dead. Wow, <laughs> we're not doing that. We're going to archive a gear from his gear grid, and we're going to go ahead and archive his raw hide boots. We can get these back really easy. That's not going to be a problem. Of course, now he has absolutely no armor for his boots, not feet, but, you know, that'll be okay. And with that hunt card revealed, we're going to move up, and our next move is going to be into the Phoenix, so we are going to start our showdown. So here we are. We see our Phoenix in all its glory. Check this guy out. Oh, it's so big compared to us. <laughs> this is going to be an epic fight. I'm so looking forward to this. All right, let's take a look at the, how this is going to be set up. And it says here, the Phoenix fills the horizon of your mind, complex and disturbing. Your very essence seems to flicker like a dying lantern. A perfect mixture of excitement and dread shakes up your insides. Before you realize it, you find yourself stepping toward the battle. So we're going to be dealing with a level one Phoenix, which means he's going to have eight basic, three advanced, and one legendary. Even at level one, they get a legendary. It has 10 toughness, and it moves eight. Wow, it's going to be flying all over. Well, there's a bird. What do you expect? It does have some traits, I'm guessing, that we're going to look into. And here is its instinct. It says, place the Phoenix at the center of the nightmare tree. It emits a hissing moan. All non-deaf survivors suffer brain damage equal to the monster level. Perform spiral age and the Phoenix turn. I have no idea what Spiral Age is, but we're about to find out. So here's our showdown setup. It looks very similar to like the White Lion setup. So we're gonna be, what's here, it says here, one Nightmare tra Terrain card set up in the center of the board. We're also gonna grab two random terrain cards, set them up as normal, place the monster in the center of the board, and place survivors six spaces away from the monster. So like I said, very similar to the way the white lion set up, but we don't have any grass like we do with the lion. But oh well, we've got a nightmare tree instead. I'm sure that's great. So let's go ahead and look at our nightmare tree. It says it's an obstacle. It blocks survivor and monster's field of view. It interrupts ranged weapon attacks and monster targeting. It's impassable. Survivors cannot move through spaces occupied by this terrain, but I can use an action to go ahead and each survivor can use this once per showdown to roll a d10 and something can happen. That'll be awesome. Now, normally this would be at setup, but since it's a special setup, that means it's going to go right where it says it's supposed to, which is right in the middle. Look at how big that is. It's going to go right here in the middle of the board. That's going to be our nightmare tree. No, maybe not. I know I don't, I don't like the nightmare tree like that. We're going to get rid of this nightmare tree, and we're going to use the real nightmare tree because <laughs> it looks awesome. Look at this thing. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use the nightmare tree. We're going to set it up just like that. It is all set to go. That looks awesome. Now, I also get to grab two random train cards, so we're going to go ahead and mix these up and see what we get. We're going to get, well, let's see, let's shuffle them up a little bit here. All right, we're going to get this one, and we're going to get this one. Let's see what we got. We got debris. Roll a d10 to scavenge. If carrying a scavenger kit, add plus the result. I have to try to get a hold of a scavenger kit. I don't have one. And then we got a dead monster. If dead monster is drawn during showdown setup, survivors may start the showdown anywhere on the showdown board survivors may go first oh this might be my saving grace start to take this guy down all right i get this and you can also scavenge it to find stuff that's gonna be awesome set up adjacent to the monster and this one i have to set up adjacent to any board edge wow that's like the totally opposite areas of both of these that's fantastic so we have our debris token i'm just gonna place this right here i don't think it's gonna play any part of this but this is huge this thing is going to save me 
I'm going to go ahead and put it right there next to the monster. I believe according to the way this, this thing's set up, normally it would take up six spaces, so I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to do this. It's going to go, it says it starts in the middle of the board, but if I do that, I'm going to put it like that. So that means this tree is going to encompass this area just like that. We're going to go like that. If that's wrong, please let me know, but I believe that's how it sets up. It sets up in a six a three by three grid here. So we're going to go ahead and put it there. We're going to put this right here. This is going to go here. Now I also am going to be able to take advantage of two acanthus plants because, of course, I have my screaming bracers with me. And we're going to go ahead and put those out as well. Now these have to be placed six spaces away from other acanthus plants. I'm going to put one over here where I'm going to be standing, and I'm going to put one right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's totally fine. We're good to go with that. Now let's go ahead and set up the Phoenix decks. So if we go ahead and look at our Phoenix card, we get to get eight basic, three advanced, and one legendary. I'm going to put this down here so I can remember that kind of stuff. Now we're going to go ahead and take our basic deck. We're going to give this the old truffle shuffle here. We're going to grab eight cards out of it. These are all basic cards. So we're going to shuffle it up a little bit, and we're going to grab eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's count them again to make sure I'm right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight. All right, next we're going to go ahead and grab our advanced cards. These are all advanced cards here. We're going to go ahead and shuffle these up here and see what three we get. We're going to get one, two, three. Actually, I hope I never see them. I hope I bypass straight through all those. And the last one we get is there's four legendary cards here. I'm not even going to turn them over to even give you a glimpse. We're going to see what these are as we play. It's going to be awesome. So there we go. We've got our entire deck. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle this thing up. It's going to be monstrously epic. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I always get excited when I fight a new monster because I don't even know what it's going to do. It's going to be awesome. So we got that ready. Now we also get a hit location deck. Look at this thing. It's huge. Hopefully that hopefully the trap is on the bottom and hopefully it doesn't have multiples. That'd be really bad. So we're going to go ahead and put it right here. Our decks are ready to go, but the Phoenix does have some extra things going on. It's got materialized spiral age zeal and dreaded decay. So we're going to go take a look at all of those. Now the first one we have is materialize and it says remove the monster from the showdown board and place it adjacent to the target. It must be placed so that the base covers as many other survivors as possible. They suffer collision as normal. Look at that. It looks pretty cool. It's coming down on us. All right, we're going to put that there. That's one of its traits. Its next trait is zeal. It says, at the end of each monster turn, perform basic action. Oh, no, that's going to be terrible. So it goes twice every time. Let's go ahead and look at the basic action. So closest threat in range, and there's time for a reaction. Target gains one age token. Well, I don't know what those are, but we'll find out, I'm sure. And then it goes into attack, which is two speed, two accuracy, and two damage. Trigger. All right. I don't know what trigger means. Maybe we'll deal with that, too. Um, then we're going to go down here, and it says razor wind. Survivors in the blast zone suffer knock knockback seven. Wow, bash and bleed. Oh boy, and this is the blast zone. It's straight ahead of it. So I'm guessing we're going to be dashing out of the way of that. <laughs> That's not going to be something we're going to want to deal with. All right, next we got Spiral Age. It's a, well, it looks pretty cool. It says Spiral Age, remove all age tokens and gain four hunt XP. Oh, that's not bad for each token. If you gain more hunt XP than available, hunt XP boxes. Oh, you cease to exist. Oh, terrible. When you cease to exist, if your settlement invented innovated family, which we do, all survivors with the surname lose two weapon proficiency levels. Oh, I haven't done the surname thing yet. I should probably do that next time we go, if we make it back. All right, we're going to put that down here. Now, the last thing we have is this dreaded de decade. And it says down here, roll a d10. If the result is equal to or less than your insanity, remove all age tokens. Otherwise, suffer spiral age. Equal to or less than your insanity. Equal to, oh my gosh, I don't think everyone's going to make it through. All right, we're going to give one to each of our characters. There's four of them. So we're going to probably be gaining age tokens, and hopefully we can get rid of them at the same time. So I get to place out our survivors anywhere I want on this map, and we get to go first. I'm going to put her right there. I'm going to put him in the back. He's going to go ahead and go right back here. And then we're going to go ahead and put her back there as well. Now, Riverwind is going to be a little bit different. He's going to maybe stand over here. He's got that cat eye circle it, so maybe he's not going to get too close. He's going to go right there. And then we have to take the Phoenix and put the Phoenix in the middle of the board. This is going to be awesome. The Phoenix is going to go right up here on the tree. Wow. <laughs> that looks awesome. i got to move the camera a little bit. Oh my gosh, look at that. This thing is standing on top of the tree, ready to take us down. That looks amazing. Oh my gosh. 
All right, this is where we're going to stop the video for now. I'm really excited for this. This is going to be so much fun. I'm just digging the way this all looks. All right, we're going to see if we can take this thing down. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you'll know when the next video comes out when we take on this Phoenix. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. Also, please don't forget to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. I hope you're enjoying this playthrough. I am having a blast. This is such a fun and exciting event. Do you think our survivors are going to have what it takes to take down this monstrous Phoenix? To find out, I need you to meet me at the co-op shop.